The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. If you're a baseball fan, it doesn't get any better than watching Greg Maddox pitch. He's at the top of the league in wins, earned run average, shutouts, complete games, and winning percentage. And he's a virtual lock for his fourth straight Cy Young. Get comfortable for the next couple of hours. Maddox faces the Mets next. Again, everybody, along with Joe Simpson, Skip Carey, welcoming you to another night of Atlanta Braves baseball. Braves and the New York Mets wrap up a four-game series tonight, and the Braves will be trying to earn a split. And as they try to earn that split, they lead with their ace, the best pitcher in baseball today. And Joe, you can make an argument, best pitcher in a long, long time. I think so, Skip, and he is fun to watch. This will be one of his last two starts of the year, and we talk a lot about his stats during the course of the year and how he's leading the league in this category or another. But when you match him up against some of the all time greats he fits in very nicely too. In fact he has a chance to become the first pitcher since the early 1900s Grover Cleveland Alexander to be exact to lead the National League in ERA in three consecutive years. In fact one neat stat that Hal Galema pulled out for us that tonight he could go out there and not retire a batter and give up 19 earned runs he'd still be leading the league in earned run average and that's quite an accomplishment. Bet you a dollar that doesn't happen. I don't think Bobby let him give up more than 12 or 13. You might be right. <laughs> Back with the starting lineups, the play-by-play -play story, right after this. Joe and Skip back in Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium, the finale of the series between the Braves and the Mets. Here's the Milano starting lineup for Dallas Green tonight. Joe Orsolak will lead it off in left field. Jose Vizcaino is at shortstop batting second. Carl Everett hits third tonight. Jeff Kent has had a great series. He's the cleanup hitter batting fourth in second base. Rico Bronia bats fifth. Todd Hunley will be the catcher batting sixth. Bottom third of the order. Butch Husky, Ryan Thompson, and then the pitcher Dave Telgater. For the Braves defensively, Dwight Smith will be in left field. Marquise Grissom in center. David Justice in right. Jones, Blauser, Lemke, and McGriff from third to first. Charlie O'Brien is behind the plate, and Greg Maddox on the mound to make his 27th start of the year. And when you start talking about is he going to improve, is he going to get better, well, there's some pretty good numbers over his last six starts that prove that he has gotten better, at least in the ERA department, a 1.02 ERA with four complete games. His umpire is working tonight behind the plate. Mark Hirschbeck at first base, Larry Vanover second base Frank Pulley and at third base Gary Darling. Joe Orsalak set to lead it off and here to take you to the play by play story here's Skip Carey. OK Joe thank you very much Orsalak hitting 290 a homer and 36 runs batted in. He is one out of four in this series with a couple of runs scored. In his career seven out of 27 against Greg Maddox. And here we go. High and outside, one ball, no strikes. Maddox 1 0 this year, 18 and 10 lifetime against New York. <laughs> a ball and a strike. One and two. I want to welcome a brand new Braves fan tonight, Madeline Elizabeth Brooks, born Tuesday night at the Cab Medical Center. The pitch, two and two. Her mama, Lori, an integral part of our crew, and her daddy, Steve, works for CNN. They're great people. We're happy for him. First child. Congratulations. Full count, three and two. Which in itself is sort of news. Got him with a breaking ball. The bat winds up in the seats. Let's see if everybody's all right. They are, and the bat boy is going to come over and try to collect. 
He should be bringing an extra piece of lumber with him, but he's not. Camera folks and the still photographers almost got one in the chops here, but fortunately it missed the folks sitting there in the seats just behind the owner's box. This guy, you know, the better. Shortens to bunt, takes a strike. He's two out of 15 in his career against the Atlanta right-hander. High fly ball, left field. That should be easy for Dwight Smith, and it is. Two down. When you look at a start for the playoffs on Tuesday of, what was it, October the 3rd? If you back up five days from there to give Greg a regular turn, that would mean a Wednesday start, I believe, or a Thursday start in Philadelphia. Thursday's an off day, so I guess Thursday's we'll go, off day. Yeah, that's right. Probably go Wednesday. Maybe give him an extra day in there. Ever at the batter, he's had a good series, four out of ten. He's driven in five runs. They want to look at the baseball. A hazy night here. It rained. Most of the day, but it's cleared off and the field's in great shape. Right through there, nothing in one. Good thing they're not playing in Denver tonight, huh? Big snowstorm blew Boys in there. there. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and two, the count. The pressure on Maddox now is self inflicted. He keeps like any human being. He wants to do better and better, but it's getting harder and harder to do better and better because you can't get much better than he's been. And nobody's harder on him than himself. <laughs> two strikeouts in the first. One, two, three. Bottom of the first. No score. A good start for Greg Maddox in the top of the first. Let's quickly take a look at the Braves starting lineup as they bat tonight. Grissom, Lemke, and Jones will be the first three. Fred McGriff, the cleanup hitter, followed by David Justice and then Dwight Smith, who's in left field. Bottom third of the order, O'Brien, Blouser, and Maddox. For the Mets, in the outfield tonight, Orsalak, Thompson, and Everett. Husky, Viscaino, Kent, and Bronya on the infield. Behind the plate, Todd Hundley and Dave Telgater on the mound, 28 years old. And he deals a strike to Grissom. He pitched most of the year at Norfolk, was five and four there, one and one up here with a six point two three earned run average league, hitting three twenty six against it. Curveball foul back. He doesn't walk many. Mix, oh and two the count. Mixes his pitches up pretty well. He's not overpowering. He's had a few stints with the Mets before, has made three appearances against the Braves, but no starts. Almost hit him inside. A ball and two strikes. He's out of Middletown, New York. 6'2, 211 pounder. One away as Grissom is out on strikes. Mark Lemke, a hot hitter, comes to the plate. Telgater pitched collegiately at the University of Massachusetts. One of those guys that was drafted late yet. Still made it to the big leagues, a 31st round choice back in 89. Lemke looks at one low and away, one ball, no strengths. Right in there, good live fastball at the knees. It's one and one. It's a shame about Mark's hitting streak and that. Stat about That's the a sacrifice bad, fly. Bad rule. If a sacrifice continues it, why shouldn't a sacrifice fly? Not just for Lemke, for everybody. Yeah. The thought that if you deliver a sacrifice fly, you weren't actually trying to advance the runner, but in many cases, that's all you're trying to do. I uh, pop. Rico Bronya makes the call and makes. The catch to now. 
Florida failed to score in the first at Philadelphia. Says up there that Colorado failed to score in the first at San Francisco, but I don't know if that's right. I don't know that they'd be starting this early. Here's Chipper Jones, two out, nobody on. He's had a great series. Five out of 11, six RBIs. High and away, one ball, no strikes. Now that game hasn't started. They're just a little messed up scoreboard wise. At the knees, outside corner, evens it up one and one. Looks like we're in San Francisco. It's sort of hazy here tonight. Mm -hmm. Great night temperature wise for the pitchers. Low 70s. Little humidity to keep a good sweat going. Tomorrow we're supposed to have rain during the day, and it's supposed to. I heard today drive it in, clear out in the evening. Hopefully we'll be able to get it in without trouble. Foul back. It's one and two. I think those couple of days off for Chipper really helped him. Day off, regularly scheduled day off on Monday, and another one on Thursday. That'll help even more. Ground ball foul past Pat Corrales. That Giants game doesn't start till 10:05 our time. Boy, the Mariners are a red-hot team, aren't they? They may be playing the best baseball in the major leagues right now, scoring a lot of runs, getting good pitching. Full count, three and two. And what a collapse by the California Angels, yeah. huh? High fly ball, left side. Everybody chasing it. Husky in foul territory. He gets turned around correctly, makes the catch, and Tailgater gets him one, two, three in the first. At the end of one, no score. And there's a fan who doesn't know that Greg Maddox is about to make his first pitch of the second inning. I bet. And he'll make it to Jeff Kent, who's five out of 25 in his career against the Atlanta right-hander. No score after one. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Strike called outside corner. 0 and 1. Maddox, 196 and two-thirds innings, 139 hits, 38 earned runs, 23 walks, 170 strikeouts. The league hitting about 198 against him now, as he got him one, two, three in the first. 0 oh 2. That one might have gotten Kent on the foot. He had an unusual injury right before Cal Ripken set the streak, hit a home run, and pulled a hamstring while in his home run trot and had to come out of the game. <laughs> That's the best time to pull one, I guess. I guess. He got around the bases all right, but then had to come up. That was in Baseball America. I was cracking up reading it. On three pitches, three strikeouts for Maddox, one away in the second. We were talking about that wild card race and how well Seattle's playing, how poorly California's playing. They're tied atop the American League West, which means they're tied in the wild card race as well. But the Yankees are lurking in the wings. They will begin to host Detroit, or New York is at Detroit coming up. Kansas City will be playing at Cleveland, Seattle at Oakland, Texas at California. They may knock each other out of it. Rico Bronia hits a foul. 0 and 1. New York is hosting Toronto tonight. The Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead in the top of the first. Another one of those great injuries that happened right about the time Ripken set the record. John Valentin of Milwaukee missed a game because, his, because he cut his hand on a pineapple in the clubhouse. Managers love that. They just love that stuff. One of their everyday guys. You were talking about Maddox earlier and his. The pressure he puts on himself and the desire to succeed. It, it's almost like that line from Apollo 13 that failure is not a. Consideration or not, a a, not an option not an option. I think that's kind of his attitude. It, no room for any errors. Boy, he is doing it tonight. Four strikeouts. He's faced five batters. Charlie O'Brien with a target outside on a hot hitter, and the off-speed pitch just dies down and away. 
Only 13 out of 44 at his career against Maddox, hitting 295. He had a tough series. Two out of 14. He was hitting 305 coming in. He's lost 10 points. Hal says that after that, cutting his hand on the. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> on the pineapple, that Phil Garner was very doleful about the whole thing. <laughs> The other good one was Dave Veers, a, a Florida pitcher. People in the next room were making too much noise. Right. He banged on the wall and hurt his hand, had to go in the DL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's his story, and he's sticking to That's it. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Look at Maddox hustle off the mound. You know, that's something else. In the tease right before the ball game tonight, uh, replay of that play made, I think, out in, what was that, San Francisco? A diving stop yeah. and he barehanded the flip over. You know, we rarely talk about the fact that he's won five straight gold gloves. You forget you don't have time. No. <laughs> talk right. about all of it. You know. <laughs> and look at it from the other point of view. How would you like to be Dave Tailgater tonight? Who pitched very well in the first inning. But you come in with a one and one record and earn run average over six and you're facing this guy? I mean, he might beat him. You never know, mm -hmm. but boy. Talk about pressure and talk about knowing you can't make any mistakes. He has to think that if I give up one run tonight, I'm in trouble. That's precisely the way to look at it when you're pitching against this guy. He's amazing. I guess the other possibility, too, you're nice and loose because you don't expect much good to happen, and maybe it will. Fly ball left field. That'll be easy. Maddox is set down. Six in a row. We go to the bottom of the second. We are scoreless in Atlanta. Zeros across after an inning and a half. And a reminder for you folks that this telecast is authorized in a broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. Bottom of the second, Fred McGriff leads it off for Atlanta. Fred needs a couple of long balls here in a hurry. He's slacked off a little bit in his quest for the 30. Again this year, he's two out of seven in this series. He scored a run. Curve ball of beauty right in there, 0 and 1. Yeah, his pace of one per series is all right as long as he hits one tonight. <laughs> 0 and 2. Pretty good breaking stuff early on from Telgator. His last start. Came against the Phillies on the 16th. He won 10 to 8, but it worked only five innings and gave up three runs. A little looping fly ball in the center field. Thompson coming on. He dives. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. Good play. One up. He almost tore up a shoulder last night doing that on a diving play that he made. Tonight he handled it better. Outstanding play. The question is, did he trap it? That's a tough call. Frank Pulley, the second base umpire tonight, made a threw his hand up quickly and looked like he did get the glove under there. Make I'd sure it didn't hit the ground. I'd have called him out too. I think David Justice, the batter, hitting at 257, 23 homers, 76 runs driven in. <laughs> Fast strike outside corner, 0 and 1. Dwight Smith on deck. Nothing wrong with Ryan Klesko. Bobby said. He's in the groove and he just wants to give Dwight a few more at bats. Make sure he's sharp. Ryan will probably be back in there tomorrow when Montreal comes to town. Tom Glavin against Carlos Perez. These at bats have been terrific for the guys who are going to be on the bench postseason. There's the first base runner of the game as Justice corks a single to center. Dwight Smith, two out of six in the series, has driven in a run and scored one. Guys like Mordecai and Dwight Smith, Devereaux, those guys getting starts, getting several at bats instead of one a game and I think that'll really benefit them as they're needed in the postseason. Dwight at 265 you see his numbers on the year. 
just as edges away is four out of six in the stolen base department. High pop. Short left or is there waiting. And he puts it away for the second out of the inning. And Charlie O'Brien the banner. Charlie down to 228 nine homers. 23 runs batted in. A little bit high one ball no strikes. I saw Javi Lopez before the ball game and talked to him in a clubhouse ask him about his hip and he said he's feeling a lot better he feels good that Wince we saw on his face after his swing when he struck out to end the game a couple of nights ago he said it was more from just being stiff and sitting around the bullpen all night he said my hips fine. Strike to <laughs> O'Brien it's one and one. Jeff Blauser waits on deck. Baltimore hammered Detroit today 13 1. Good curveball. I believe CJ Nitkowski was leading and winning in that ball game 1 to nothing after six. And he was taken out of the ball game and Baltimore then went nuts. Crazy. Looks like we'll have a new manager there, huh? Sparky is. Oh, but out the door. Didn't he say he was going to make an announcement about the middle of this month? The pitch. About his intentions? I read a quote the other day where he was already quoting the writer, and I forget who it was. Might have been Peter Gammons, where he said he was already referring to the Tigers as they oh. rather than us. If that's true, I think there's your announcement. Mm -hmm. But I think he'd like to manage again somewhere. Yeah, it's missed. Again, a lot of curveballs here early on from Tell Gator. Neither team took batting practice on the field. Any swings the guys got, they took in the cage underneath the stadium. That's not an inviting situation when you're facing Greg Maddox. Now, not no. get any swings in before the ball game. Hot shot off the pitcher. Vizcaino makes a heck of a play and throws him out, and the inning is over. What a play by the shortstop. Tailgater appears to be okay. Tough break for O'Brien. He hit that ball hard. One hit, no runs, no errors. One left. We've played two. No score in Atlanta. Butch Husky leads off the third inning and looks at a strike. That one's high, a ball and a strike to count. Speaking of weird injuries, he played in the Arizona Fall League last year. Hit a solo homer. Fouled away. And suffered a subluxation, a slippage of the shoulder in the socket of his left, left shoulder on the swing. He had to have a pinch runner to score the home run. Odd. Ground ball to second. Lemke digs it out. Boy, he runs well for a big man. One yeah, away. they're they're hoping that he lives up to the potential that they have always envisioned for him. He's in a little better shape than he's been in the last couple of times he's been called up, but he's got a lot of promise. Had a terrific year at Norfolk, MVP of the league, and. Like he might be the third baseman next year. 28 homers, 87 RBIs, hit about 284. Hasn't done much up here. Came in at 205. Here's Ryan Thompson. Didn't mean to. It's 0 and 1. Thompson will be fighting for a job next spring. It looks like. Mm -hmm. He's hitting 260. When they made the trade involving he and Jeff Kent, Thompson was the most highly coveted of the two, but Kent has sort of passed him up. 
fouled at home plate. He's battled a lot of injuries too. But what has happened since he's been out of the lineup a lot is that guys like Carl Everett have gotten a chance to play and the Mets realize that Everett's going to be a top notch player for him. Which makes but it a little crowded out there. Chopper to short. Blouser backs up. Fields. Two down. Eight in a row knocked over by Maddox. And the Bonilla deal helped him in getting. They got Alex Ochoa in that deal and they got Damon Buford and that turned their team around as far they were. You think we're slow. You should have seen them before he made that deal. They didn't have anybody who could run. You know I think what it also did skip was it gave them some direction. They weren't sure what they were going to do with their veteran players if they were going to make wholesale changes and start all over. And when they made those changes they got excellent quality in return. And while they are retooling and rebuilding this ball club. They're doing it with pitching number one and I think they're going to be a force in the next couple of years. Tailgater is two out of five since coming up. But he's quickly behind here nothing in two. We are scoreless top of the third. A little bit outside a ball and two strikes fan appreciation weekend starts tomorrow night. A lot of valuable prizes will be given away tomorrow night Saturday night. Sunday afternoon. That got Mark Hirschbeck the home plate umpire has to walk that one off. One and two. One of the reasons is because when Charlie O'Brien sets up inside or outside Hirschbeck really doesn't go with him. Skip, he, he stays right over the center of the plate. And that left a left him virtually unprotected on that foul tip. Inning over. Got him with a breaking ball. Five strikeouts. Nine in a row. Set down by Maddox. Bottom of the third. No score. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. And a reminder that for all the latest NFL highlights and news, tune into the Coors Light Pro Football Tonight Show at 7 o'clock Sunday with Vince Cellini and Mark May. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, join Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden as the Green Bay Packers take on the expansion Jacksonville Jaguars on the NFL on TNT. We go to the bottom of the third. Jeff Blouser leads it off. Scoreless game. Telgator has matched Maddox pitch for pitch to this point. And they've both been tough. A big right-hander delivers. There's a strike on the corner, 0 and 1. He's doing a good job of getting ahead in the count, and then mixing in that breaking stuff. That didn't miss by much. A ball and a strike. We don't televise tomorrow. It's baseball night. What do they call it? Baseball Network. Baseball Network. And they call it Baseball Night in America. And so we won't be here. <laughs> Blouser. Another strikeout. He's doing a great job of keeping the hitters off balance. Take a look at the target set up by Hunley. Nice target, and boy, he didn't have to move the glove at all. Burned the outside corner. Nothing Blouser could do about that. His pitches move a little bit, a la Maddox. At least they do tonight. Greg hits one, fair into the corner. Don't get hurt. <laughs> He gets a standing ovation. His first extra base hit of the year. Oh, he jumped all over that fastball. It was up a little bit and he hooked it down into the corner. Marquise Grissom, a strikeout victim his first time. Let up as high. One ball, no strikes. 
second time through the order. Let's see if the Braves timing gets a little better on that breaking stuff. There's another one in there. One and one. He struck out Marquise with a pitch breaking ball that was way off the plate outside first time around. Down and in two balls and a strike bottom of the third no score. We're not through with the Mets we end the season in New York next weekend. Started to go. Negative and the counts three and one. First base umpire Larry Vanover decided he didn't go around. It looked like he checked it pretty good. Grissom was on his way to first with the pitch called a strike and it's three and two. Three one curveball. Not all he's throwing Marquise is breaking stuff. That was a pretty good one right over the top. Marquise thought it was high but it dropped in there just in time. So a payoff pitch is due. They walked him this time two on one out for Mark Lemke. Mike Mims out of Macon Georgia pitching tonight for the Phillies just singled home Lenny Webster Philadelphia leads Florida one nothing. They're in the bottom of the third. Keith Lockhart is just doubled scoring Tom Goodwin. Kansas City leads Minnesota one nothing bottom of the first. With Gary Gaetti coming to the plate. See those numbers there I think a lot of that you can attribute to batting second in the order a lot more and being more aggressive and having a few more opportunities. Well he's got an opportunity here to give his team the lead. Tapper to first. Bronya kicks it around everybody say. He wanted to go to second then he thought about going to first and then he booted it. And that's only his third error all year long. He might have been hurrying here thinking they could get to and just couldn't come up with the transfer and even on the flip to first base didn't even have the ball in his glove. Those are the kind you lose sleep over. Especially if it costs your team a run. And it's embarrassing. Yeah. But when you've only kicked three of them all year I wouldn't feel too badly. Chipper with a chance to do serious damage. Line fair into the corner. Two will score. Lemke is around third. They are going to wave him. Here comes the now they stop it. As it works out he could have scored but they didn't know the throw would be that poor. Jones now with eight RBIs in this series and 84 on the year. He made two great adjustments. Number one on this breaking ball. He kept his hands back and just golfed it down the line. That got the two runs home. But then he had to make an adjustment. Jimmy Williams was waving Lemke home and threw up a late stop sign. Chipper saw him waving him and he was headed to third and Chipper had to stop and hustle back to second. Had he known they were going to miss the cutoff man he'd have kept them coming. Well Fred McGriff is up there. It's two nothing Atlanta. Second and third one out. Swung over the top of a breaking ball one one. David Justice on deck. The tailgater will just get that breaking ball up a little bit for Fred. He's in business. Threw him a fastball. He was looking for a breaking ball it appeared and tailgater is ahead of one too. And all this discussion about Hideo Nomo 
and Chipper Jones battling for the Rookie of the Year award. Ain't no contest in my book. The guy right there has played every day and he's done a terrific job. Into the dirt. Do you agree with me though that Nomo should be considered a rookie? There are some who say he should not. That's a that's a tough call. It's a real I know the, the thing about playing in the Japanese league. I read an interesting story today about I think it's called the Makarov rule in hockey where one of the great Russian certain age Russian players came over and he was 27 or 28 years old and they changed the rule where you had to be under 25. No, I disagree with you. I think you've never played in the major. They forget the fact that he that nobody on his team speaks his language and the, yeah. all that. But he's never played in the major leagues over here before. I think he's a rookie. I hope Chipper wins, but I think no more deserves consideration as a rookie. Chipper has been quick to point that out too about the change in cultures and living away from home and how difficult it's been for no more. The 2 2 little chopper down the first baseline. That'll get a run home. It's three to nothing. McGriff is retired, but he drives in his 90th run of the year, and Chipper moves over to third. And David Justice, the batter, he single to center his first time. Three nothing Atlanta. That curveball is getting it up now. That was high. Mm -hmm. One ball, no strikes. That was too high. Fouled back. I had another idea today. There's now some debate among the Baseball Writers Association about whether or not. Greg Maddox should be considered for the most valuable player award. And my suggestion to the baseball writers would be the 1 1 pitch into the dirt that Hunley's tough 2 and 1. They should have a Henry Aaron or Ty Cobb or Babe Ruth award for the most valuable everyday player. They should have the Cy Young award for the most valuable starting pitcher. They should have the Fireman of the Year award for the best relief pitcher. And then when they're through with all that, then vote for a most valuable player among those three men. That's a, that's a great idea. Well hit down the left side to foul and out of play. That's a great idea because I don't like the idea of a pitcher winning the MVP and the Cy Young. No, I, I don't either. Nothing against Maddox or anybody no. else, but an everyday player is in a different category. And then if everybody gets their award, and then if you want to vote on which one of those three you think was the most valuable, I think that's fine. There was a time where the Cy Young Award went to the best pitcher in the major leagues, not just one in each league. But they wised up to that and started awarding a Cy Young to each league. Ground ball, Kent has it. That'll end the inning, or should. It does. The inning is over, but not before. Atlanta scores three runs. One of the runs is earned. They get three runs on two hits. One air, one left at the end of three. Braves three. New York nothing. Go to the fourth. Time for the Aflac trivia question. When was the last time the Red Sox, Indians, and Braves won the World Series? That, of course, is three different years. We go to the fourth, and here with the play-by-play -play story, Joe Simpson. Thanks, Skip. Greg Maddox has retired nine in a row and has looked good doing it. He's struck out five. Or Salak. Oh, off the glove, hopefully. Jones is going to try to get him and does. What a recovery by Chipper Jones. Now let's see if Maddox is all right. It slapped when the ball hit him like it hit leather. Let's take a look. I don't know. Can't tell from that angle. Didn't look like he had his glove up high enough. Yeah, yeah, maybe he did. I think he did. I think he. I'm sure it hurts. But it looks like he got the glove up there. Bobby out to make sure. And Jeff Porter. And as they finish their discussion, he says he's all right. He's retired 10 in a row. The Braves made a defensive change at the start of the inning. 
Raphael Belliard has checked in. He's at second base for Mark Lemke. I hope that Lemke didn't re injure that hamstring run on the bases. He may have slamming on the brakes or. Yeah. That could be as Viscaino takes a strike. Because when he got to third, he thought he was going to be sent home and turned it up just a notch. Slow roller to Belliard. Oh, he had to hurry. Good hustle by Viscaino made it close. Two down. You can hear that slap I was talking about in regular speed off the bat of Orsalak. Yeah, and it does sound like whether it, leather it might have gotten part of his body as well, but he appears to be fine. Carl Everett took a call, third strike, his first time up. Good off-speed pitch. You know, one of the things when I think that. If there's anything that irritates Greg Maddox and very little does he's so mild mannered and low key is if somebody makes a reference well you make it look so easy well you didn't have any trouble tonight those types of things because he wants you to understand that it is hard work for him what he does there's a lot of work and preparation that goes into it there's the first hit of the night for the Mets you can hear the fans moan and groan just about the they almost expect mm -hmm. a perfect game from the guy. He does, think, but he does make it look easy. I know uh -huh. it's not, but for the most part, he, that's exactly what he makes it look like. You get one hit back at you, and <laughs> what's going on here? Makes you a little gun shy the next time. Everett has two stolen bases. He's at first with two outs for Kent, who struck out his first time up, but a dangerous hitter. Kent with a good series, six for 14, three doubles, six RBIs. Fought it off. He's had a few of those types of hits in this series, and he gets another one. Everett speeds around to third as Belliard runs it down. Runners at the corners with two outs. Jeff Kent's been wearing out that little area out behind second base and now down the first base line. Yeah, this is a real bleeder, but he'll take it. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Mets look for somebody to put in the middle of their lineup for next year so they can bat Kent fifth. I think he's a good guy to have a little lower in the order. Not your typical cleanup hitter. Rico Bronya struck out his first time up. He's been hot. Five homers, 13 RBIs in his last nine games. This should end the inning. Belliard's got it. And that'll do it for the Mets. They get two hits, strand two runners. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Braves still on top, three to nothing. Our Aflac trivia question once again. The last time the Red Sox, Indians, and Braves won a World Series. And the Affleck trivia answer is right behind. And that's about long enough for the Bravos. Here's Joe. Red Sox have been saying that too. Dwight Smith fly to left his first time up. Telgaver, Telgator gave up three runs in the third inning, but only one was earned. Two and zero. Oh. 21 RBIs for Dwight. 18 have come while pinch hitting. And he has certainly done everything asked of him in that role. 3 0. Smith, O'Brien, and Blouser here for the Braves. He's swinging. Sends a drive into deep right center. Back goes Thompson at the wall. A leaping catch right up against the padded wall in right center field. Dwight Smith robbed of extra bases on the 3 0 pitch. He jumped all over it. He hit a rope as a pinch hitter last night and got nothing out of it because of Thompson, too. He just missed getting this out of here. That guy's really a good outfield. 
covers a lot of ground. Just got to stay in the lineup. Charlie O'Brien bounced one off of Telgator's glove that Viscaino grabbed and threw him out on. That came back in the second inning. Charlie two for his last 18. Good breaking ball. You don't think there were a few rampant heartbeats in that Braves dugout when that line drive went sailing back at Maddox, do you? That might be one of those where even Jeff Porter doesn't really want to go out there and find out what happened. In the hole, backhanded by Viscaino, another long play, and he made it. Viscaino has robbed O'Brien of hits twice already. I was talking to Tim McCarver, who does the games for the Mets on their television, and he was saying that, in his view, Jose Viscaino is the most valuable player on this Mets team this year. Wow. He said he has made all the plays at shortstop. He's hitting 270 coming into play tonight. He said, but every one of his 52 RBIs has meant something. Well, he made a dandy play there. Blouser's going to try him, but Viscaino decides if Husky can't get that, I can't either. Blouser with a two out hit. And here's Maddox who doubled his last time up. It was his first extra base hit since May of last year. May 22nd. And he came around to score on a double by Chipper Jones. Maddox now nine for 67 on the year, 134 average. You know, with the races the Braves had in 91, 92, and 93, Skip, it's very difficult, I think, this year. Oh, another one. He's hooked another one into the corner. Orsalak can't get that one. Blouser on his way to third. Maddox headed to second. He'll make it standing. Two doubles for Maddox. And listen to this crowd. They're on their feet again. Fastball up in his eyes, and he got around on it. Hit the daylight <laughs> out of him. Two high fastballs. Now we're going to have to listen to that for the rest of the year. <laughs> well, at least it'll be quiet. It'll be in a whisper mode. Yeah, that's right. Marquise Grissom has struck out, walked, and scored a run. No, the point I was going to make about clinching early, it's almost like the Braves are ready to get on with it now. Let's, we've clinched, now let's go play the playoffs. Nobody knows what to do. I mean, you go, it doesn't really mean mm -hmm. what it's supposed to mean anymore. Breaking ball is high, 1 0. Oh. I think it puts a little pressure on a manager and a coaching staff figuring out how you get everybody, get your bench guys in enough to get them sharp, but not so much that the starters lose their edge. It's right. difficult. They're going to put Grissom on with first base open, and Rafael Belliard will get his first at bat since coming on for Lemke. No word on whether Lemke just took the rest of the night off, thanks to Bobby Cox, or if he may have injured himself trying to go first to third on the double by Chipper Jones. Well last night Walt Weiss hit his first home run in 750 at bats. Bell yards a little more than twice that number. I'll take a single though I don't want to be greedy. Blast minor begins to heat up down in their bullpen. Belliard's been tough also with guys in scoring position. First pitch fastball hitter. Bases loaded, two out. First pitch swinging. Viscaino is going to have to go to first and got his man. And Telgator leaves the Braves with the bases loaded. No runs, two hits, but three left. Maddox with a couple of doubles tonight, and he's leading it three to nothing.
three nothing Braves on top we go to the top of the fifth Todd Hundley Butch Husky and Ryan Thompson for the Mets Hundley flied to left his first time <laughs> you want to break down Maddox's numbers whether he's home road day night grass turf we got it for you that's fought off into center field Hundley gives the Mets a good start here in the fifth inning. I'm sure it's interesting but I know in all those places I want him pitching before I see it. Yeah that's right. Can't lose can you and look the home ERA higher than any place. And that may not be too much of a surprise because. The ball does jump out of here and he's allowed. Some of his eight home runs allowed this year but. You gotta like him on turf don't you. I gotta like him yeah. right here too. <laughs> But Husky <laughs> grounded a second his first time up. Three hits now for the Mets. Husky one for 14 in the series. Look at that target way inside and he can't get around on it. A Griffin foul territory has it. Target was inside and the ball kept running even farther inside. This is what makes him exceptional. Look at the movement on that ball. You know, people talk about he doesn't have a great fastball and he doesn't have a great fastball, but he's got a pretty darn good one. He will surprise you. He can go to a cross seam fastball and bust it in on your hands, and when you're looking for a changeup or something that's Maybe a little bit off speed. It, it can really surprise you. Sneaky quick. Ryan Thompson fouls one off. 0 and 1. I'll bet there are six, seven thousand more people here tonight than there have been for the other games in this series, just because he's twirling. I'd pay my money to see him too. One and one. Let me think about it. Whether that's a true statement. I haven't seen you hit your hip very much. I was wondering if you were here. If you were going to say you would agree with me, and then I was really going to get on you. No, 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 no. <laughs> one, one pitch. One and two. One of my favorite people in the game, coaching at first base for the Mets, Hondo Frank Howard. Well, he's nonstop action in the first base box, too. He just paces down there. One and two to Thompson. Two and two. Charlie O'Brien has the luxury. You might notice him sometimes after he gives the signal and gets set up in his crouch and gives the target. He's looking at the first base runner. He does. Maddox's pace and he doesn't have to worry about Greg being too far from the target. He did it there. Full count. Second full count of the night, if I'm not mistaken. I believe Orsilak leading off the game was the other one. Struck him out. Hunley not running. That sky to center field and Marquise Grissom is under it and has it. Two down. And we got a pinch hitter for Dave Telgator. Damon Buford will come out and hit. Buford hitting 239, four homers, 12 RBIs. Two for three is a pinch hitter. And Robert, now Robert Person will. Come on to pitch. Excuse me, Joe. If they were thinking that if they needed to get an out, last inning with the bases loaded, Blast Miner, a good sinker ball pitcher, could get you a ground ball if you needed it. But Person's a very hard thrower. Runner at first, two outs, three nothing Braves in the fifth. Quickly ahead, 0 and 2, burning that outside corner. Another situation I wouldn't envy anybody having to come off the bench and face this guy after he's had a couple of innings to get loose. Buford didn't even blink and it was 0 and 2. 
just missed being 0 and 3. In fact, yeah, I think it's a little high, a little away. Greg thought he was going to get the call, but must have stayed off the plate just enough. Got him anyway. Strikeout number six for Maddox. He strands another runner. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pete and Don head your way. Maddox and the Braves lead it three to nothing. Middle of the fifth inning, Braves lead it three to nothing. And if you look at that line up there, Pete, you see a zero where the run column is. That's no surprise with Maddox out there. Absolutely not. He's just been a marvel this year, start after start. Uh, you really can only think of two starts this year that he was not at his best. Not just a good game, but a great game. And another one coming from him tonight so far. Mets are going to go to their bullpen. Robert Person will come on. Dave Tailgater went four, gave up five hits. Three runs could have been different for him though if Rico Bronia makes the play on Lemke. You see Persons numbers averaging a strikeout an inning in the major leagues. He's a good looking right handed prospect. But then again uh, talking about that, something that's not a surprise. The Mets seem to have put together a nucleus of what could be a pretty good ball club next year or the next year. Isn't that funny how organizations tend to do that though. The Mets have always been known as an organization that develops pitchers. You look at a team like the Boston Red Sox. They're an organization that seems to develop offense hitters. There are certain clubs that just seem to have a knack for developing one phase of the game over all the others. Chipper Jones to lead it off. Chipper has popped a third. Got himself a two run double. Now first pitch swinging. That's going to carry pretty well but they're gonna end up shy of the warning track. One out. Chipper now with 84 RBIs. And it's the time of the year for speculation. Rookie of the year. Cy Young. No speculation on Cy Young. That's led by the cinch. But let's suppose he wins it again this year. What do you do for the rest of the guys who've had good years, Pete? I mean, you have come up with some other kind of award for those guys? For the Cy Young, you might. First pitch, but Griff swings and misses 0 and 1. A writer had the idea the other day that since he seems to win the Cy Young Award every year, the runner up should get the Greg Maddox Award to give the other pitchers in the National League something to shoot for. Yeah, he's just about going to retire that. The 0 1 pitch to McGriff. Same spot, didn't go. 1 and 1. You're right, you, when uh, splitting from topic to topic, when you're talking about how clubs develop specific players. There's a strike to McGriff and it's one and two. Braves went through a stretch where it was pitchers. Now it looks like the Braves are stockpiling young outfielders. And before the pitchers were developed, before the Glavins and Averys and Merkers and people like that came along. To left center field. Orsalak's got it. Two outs. It was always hitters. Dale Murphy, Bob Horner. Hitters uh, were, were the thing that they used to try to build this club around because of their ballpark's reputation as a launching pad. And then all of a sudden you find out that uh, hey good pitching can win in this ballpark. And there has been some good pitching come through this organization. Two outs for David Justice. David got a single he grounded a second one out of two. Breaking ball outside one and oh he's going through a, a little bit of an unusual stretch. He's only eight out of his last thirty eight over a seven game period but he's picked up an RBI a game eight RBIs during that stretch so he has made the most of his hit out of play he had an interesting Why comment the other day he said something about he knows he's in a little down stretch right now he said but that's okay he said because if I'm in a down stretch now that means I'll probably be hot in postseason he knows it's a game of cycles and you're going to go through ups and downs and you're going to come out of it and that's the way he's looking at it there's a ball two and one I have found him ever since he came to the big leagues to always put a positive slant on things like that. High in the air shallow center. Who wants it. Thompson is there. They're going to let him have it. A one two three inning for person and Braves go quietly in the fifth inning. We have completed five. Atlanta leads at three nothing.
And as we go to the sixth inning, here's tonight's Budweiser game summary. Greg Maddox, another gem in the works. Six strikeouts, only three hits allowed. Chipper Jones, a two-run double. And Fred McGriff is his 90th RBI of the year. And as we go to the sixth inning, top of the batting order for the Mets, Joe Orsalak. Struck out swinging and in line one off of Maddox that was eventually played by Chipper Jones turned into an out. There was some concern as to whether or not Maddox may have taken that in the ribs, but apparently he did get leather on it. Out of play, 0 and 2. Orsalak's one of those guys that has kind of amazed me. I'll tell you why. If he's still hitting after this pitch, he is one and two. Here's a guy that, if you look up his numbers, every year he hits 280, 278, 285, 260, 284, but seems to bounce around one, two, three, three or four teams. And one of the reasons you don't hear much about it when they're talking about the players with those kind of numbers is it always seems that he's playing for a second division ball club. He played with the Orioles when they were a bad team, played with the Pirates when they were a bad team, played with the Mets the last few years. They've been a bad team. They're getting better now. Now that they are getting better, will Orsalek be back with them next year or will he go to another bad team? There are some players that just can't seem to get lucky and get on the winning ball club where they'd get some a little more positive acclaim. This guy Eno's the hitter, fouls it out of play, and it's 0 and 1. He's 0 for 2, fly the left, rounded to second. There was a player before the current Frank Thomas named Frank Thomas that yeah. played in, ma in Major League Baseball for about a 15 year period. He went through his whole career playing for the Cubs, the Pirates, teams that were always second division teams. He was a great home run hitter, but didn't get much notoriety. And at the end of his career, where does he go? The expansion Mets. <laughs> <laughs> some of the rest of the scoreboards rolling past. Some of the rest of the scores on the scoreboard rolling past for you. Comebacker Maddox is Maddox is going to feel like he has a target on his back and he won't get him this time. Greg's got to change unis. They're taking pot shots at him. Watch the way he stops this one. Turns off his leg, finds it, and thought he had the runner at first, but ruled safe by Larry Vanover. If Viscaino had been a right-handed hitter, he would have had him. He gets a lot of balls hit right back at him. Because don't you know that that uh, what they tell you when they go face Maddox is don't try to pull him, take the ball up the middle. Here's Everett. First one outside, one and zero. Oh, Everett one out of two. You were back in '93. Maddox got hit with a line drive in postseason play. Morandini smoked one up the middle. Pickoff attempt almost picked off McGriff. 2 and 0. Another pitcher that pitched many years for Atlanta used to have a lot of hot shots hit right back up the middle was Phil Necro. The same same reason. Hitters were told just try to make contact, hit the ball somewhere up the middle. Don't try to pull him. For that reason, a lot of line drives and a couple times in Nuxie's career, he had to miss a couple of starts because of being nailed by line shots up the middle. I played with a couple of pitchers, one with Houston and one with Oakland, and I know you'll recognize their names that we used to call Target because it seemed like they would get more smashes. Chris Cotteroli with Oakland. Everything that he threw was down, pitched away. And Vern Rule, there goes the runner. Rounded a third, but Chipper Jones got it and got him. This guy, you know, moves up 90 feet. Two gone for Jeff Kent. Vern Rue used to be the subject of a lot of kidding the day after starts because and you could start preparing the day before because you know he was going to get one off his left or right knee or off of some part of his anatomy and Joe Necro would lead the charges against him the next day and stretching in the outfield. Ken has struck out swinging got a single the Mets with four base hits all of them single three to nothing brave. There goes the runner. They're going to let him have it. That's six steals for Viscaino. And I think that one might have been charged to Greg because he didn't even take a look at second.
if you've watched Braves baseball all year, you have seen that line pop up there more than once when Maddox is pitching. Comebacker, Blousers could have this one. That'll do it for the Mets. Mets get a base runner as far as third, but Maddox leaves him standing there. No runs are hit, no errors, and one left. To the bottom of the six, it's the Braves three. Mets yet to score. Bottom of the sixth inning, Braves lead it three to nothing. Dwight Smith, Charlie O'Brien, Jeff Blauser, first three up. Maddox working on a four hitter. We had to work with Greg on falling off the mound and getting out of the way of those. Get those four other guys in the infield get those line shots. Dwight 0 for two, two fly balls, one to left, one to center. First pitch swinging, and that's foul, 0 and 1. You know what Bobby Cox is doing that I like, Pete? The guys he's going to have to count on coming off the bench, he's going he's making sure they get a lot of at-bats this last Yeah, these weeks. last couple of weeks. Good curveball. <laughs> Dwight finds himself in a hole 0 and 2. You're seeing either Dwight Smith or Mike Devereaux or Luis Polonia, guys who are going to be counted on to come on and pinch hit in postseason in the lineup, one of them at least, almost every night. And the last thing you need if you're one of those players who's not an everyday player is to sit for two weeks and then all of a sudden try to win the fifth game of the first round of the playoffs. The semifinals. The divisional playoffs they are being called. Catchy title. Two balls, two strikes. Postseason semifinals. Close. Did get the call. Three and two. Person out of Lowell, Massachusetts, now makes his home in St. Louis. Out of University City High School. Wright stays alive. He's a guy who's a product of uh, a junior college program. And a darn good one, too. Seminole Junior College out in Oklahoma. Originally picked by the Cleveland Indians, traded to the White Sox. Then the Marlins drafted him. High and deep, fair or foul, it is foul. Still three and two. He must be wondering what it's going to take. He almost had one out in the fourth inning when Ryan Thompson made a leaping catch against the wall. He'll have to try it next time. Persons rings up his first strikeout. The right-hander has set down four in a row since coming out in relief of Dale Tailgate, Dave Tailgater, and that'll bring up Charlie O'Brien. Charlie has twice been thrown out on grounders that probably came because, getting thrown out, I mean, because of all those years of sitting behind the plate. A ground ball off the pitcher that the shortstop threw him out on, and then from shallow right field, Biscaino threw him out last time. One ball, one strike. And that foul ball hit the screen, almost came back and hit Mark Hirschbeck right in the back of the head. He was saved by <laughs> Todd Hundley, <laughs> who caught it right above Mark's head. Hey, how about the start of the game being delayed a little bit tonight? Did you notice that? Yes, they called a strike on Frank Pulley for delaying. He was over talking. We had to wait. The rest of his cohorts out there. <laughs> There's Frank. Well, maybe it's the last chance he'll have to work with the Mets or the Braves this year. Wanted to get a few final words in. <laughs> Tricky Hop is going to get past Husky. We'll see how they score it. Once he backed up on it, you had a chance. He was a dead. You had the feeling he was a dead duck. It's going to be an error. Yeah, he was doing two things wrong. He was backing up in the ball and also tried to play it off to his side. See how he tries to. Ole that ball off to his side there and that's a difficult way to make a play and a ball coming at you like that block it at least that'll put O'Brien at first bring up Jeff Blauser a strikeout and a single Jeff now up over the century marks and strikeouts and his average still below the 220 mark he could use a good finish to get him ready for postseason it will not be this time that's in shallow right field Kent's got it two gone and here comes Greg Maddox he may be the hitting star tonight. He has himself a pair of doubles. Watching Husky make that play. 
see if we think on the same wavelength. Who's the best you've seen at recent years at giving the ball the first move like that and then coming up with Terry it? Terry Pendleton. No doubt. Terry Pendleton played those like a counter puncher in boxing. He'd say, go ahead, take your best shot, and then had the quick, quick love and would come up with it. Ball one to Greg Maddox. Greg now with 10 hits. A 147 batting average. He even scored a run tonight. He went around one and one. They're not going to hold O'Brien at first. He'll get a walking lead. One ball, two strikes. Al Galima reminding me a little bit earlier something speaking of Maddox up there which I found absolutely unbelievable. He'll go sit down this time. Do you realize in his 297 career starts he's never allowed more than two homers in a game? He's probably not thinking that right now. Braves come up empty here in the sixth inning. No runs, no hits. One air, one left. Six in the books. Three to nothing Braves. Three to nothing Braves. Seventh inning and here's Pete. Okay, thank you, Don Rico. Bronya will lead off, followed by Todd Hundley and then Butch Husky. Bronya tonight 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded out to second. Fouls back the first one, 0 and 1. Nothing in two now on Bronya. Pretty good ratio there. Two to one is great. Three to one, I was always told, was exceptional. I don't know how to describe that. Five to one. This one will stay in play for Chipper Jones. Drifting into foul territory now. One gone. Beat the late Jimmy Reese. One of the greatest people to ever be around baseball would chart the pitches for the California Angels. And if you if you had a two to one ball game, strikeouts to walks, he'd give you a cigar. And if you got three to one, you know, he'd give you a couple of cigars. Maddox would own Cuba. Here's Don Udley. It was flat out and singled. One ball, no strikes on Udley. Braves leading at 3-0. We're in the top half of inning seven. These teams will meet again next weekend in New York as the regular season comes to a close. That's a foul ball. And the count goes to one and one on Hundley. We've talked about so many different facets of Greg Maddox in his game. As you look out in the bullpen for New York and see Pete Walker beginning to loosen up. But there's a demeanor about Greg. He doesn't have, as you've mentioned many times, Don, he doesn't have a one great pitch, one overpowering fastball or an outstanding curveball. Or there's, there's not one pitch that he throws better than any other pitcher. It's his control. There's a strike in the inside corner. But his demeanor out there, it's almost as if, and there are just a few people you can say this about in all sports, it's almost as if he knows something about this game that nobody else does. Right. It's like he's got a secret. And only he knows it. Well, you made the comparison when we were talking over in radio. You or you made the description that he physically isn't the biggest guy around. He is not the strongest. In so many ways, his approach to what he does, his method of handling fame and the results reminds me so much of Joe Montana. Joe Montana is a guy that if you if you watch both of these guys, their personalities are quite similar. Uh, both have very dry wits, but both find a way. A lot of people who find a way to get the job done just get it done. These guys find a way to get the job done in an exceptional manner. Another 1-2 pitch on the way to Hundley. Strike three call inside corner. The exceptional control we were telling you about. I think his greatest asset may be he does not have one exceptional pitch. A little fastball that comes back over the inside corner. We've only seen that. I think that's 91 times this year called. 
but he doesn't have an exceptional pitch so as a hitter you can't go up and look for a curveball you know Bly Levin and myself in a jam are going to go to the curveball uh, Gibson probably go to a slider if it was on you won but as a hitter you can't go up and look for anything he might throw you one of four pitches in a perfect spot here's Husky first pitch swinging fly ball to right David Justice in his tracks and one two three go the Mets in the seventh. nothing doing for New York we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning three nothing Atlanta We go to the bottom half of inning seven Atlanta leading at three nothing top of the order due up Marquise Grissom then Raphael Belliard and then Chipper Jones Grissom is 0 for 1 tonight a strikeout a couple of walks Greg Maddox working on another four hit shadow he's given up only five earned runs in his last six starts over 51 innings. In the air, foul territory. Long run for Rico Bronya. Out near the Braves bullpen. Made the catch. Good play by Bronya. He wasn't quite sure what was down there waiting for him. He knows there's a tarp down there. He knows there's a wall down there. But he couldn't take his eye off the ball. He wouldn't have had to worry about this in Shea Stadium. It would have been about 10 rows back. But he did a good job of staying with that. Not only to get to it, but when a ball goes out that far, a foul ball, coming down, it starts to drift back toward the playing field. And there's a tendency to come up short and just a short arm and have it fall off the end of the glove. Good play. Now Belliard who grounded out to short his first time up. Files back this one. You know how everybody's making the announcements now, including the Atlanta Braves, that we are now on the internet. Mm -hmm. Rafael Belliard gave me a note the other night. His art store in Boca Raton is now on the internet. Up the middle base hit for Rafael Belliard. Here's how you can get a hold of Rafael Belliard's art store in Boca Raton, Florida. www.hittheveach.com. <laughs> Five years in a row, discounting the strike year, Rafael Belliard's played on a division winner. Now he's on the internet. He's got it all working. I don't think it's not coincidental either that that has happened because he's the kind of guy that could be the last piece of a puzzle to a winning ball club. Chipper Jones now with 84 RBIs on the air after a two run double back in the third. You can also find Raphael on the internet if you punch up Pac-Man. <laughs> he will pop up. 2-0, the count on Chipper. Now it's 2-1. Braves leading at three nothing bottom of the seventh Belliard at first with one out person throws to first Raphael back person's been impressive in this series made his major league debut against Atlanta on Monday night where two scoreless innings he's pitched well here 25 years old and with his fourth organization down the line two and two whenever I see a pitcher like that I always think about Something that our longtime partner Ernie Johnson always talked about about pitching. So many times a pitcher does not really reach his full ability at least 25 or 26 years old. Some kick in early, some don't. And sometimes a guy like this will bounce around three or four times before finding a spot in the big leagues. Also, sometimes their niche is not in the way they're originally used. I guess an extreme example would be Dennis Eckersley, who blossomed after 30. As a reliever, I watched Person and I could see him as a good reliever. In the air, he got under it though, right center field. Here comes Everett. He's got it, two down. Belliard back to first, and that'll bring up Fred McGriff. 
McGriff tonight 0 for 3. He's fly to center, grounded out to first, and fly to left. This one back to count 0 and 1. Tomorrow night, the Expos are in town. Tom Glavin against. Carlos Perez Saturday night it'll be Steve Avery against Pedro Martinez Sunday afternoon Kent Merker against Pablo Alvarez high in the air deep right field back to the wall goes Everett this ball is caught right up against the wall and Fred McGriff who's running out of time only eight games left in the regular season after this one just missed his 27th home run of the year in his quest to become a 30 home run man for the eighth straight year. We go to the eighth, still 3 0 Atlanta. Take a look at our Delta scoreboard. Eisenreich a homer. Pittsburgh leads Chicago early. San Diego at LA. Colorado at San Francisco. We'll give you the rest of them as we come in here. In the air by Ryan Thompson in the shallow right field. Belliard back. Just is coming on. Neither one can get to it. It kicks all the way back toward the infield. And Ryan Thompson has himself a bloop double. David Just is not believing that he missed that ball. You can tell that you can read his lips there. I don't think that ball carried quite as far as he thought he was going to. Had it in the web of his glove. Almost made the catch. But as he bounced up and flicked back to the infield. That should be a double on that. That's a good try by David. Now Edgardo Alfonso up to pinch hit for person. Hitting 276 for the year. Good looking youngster, only 22 years old. Takes a strike. Don't go wandering off. We're going to give you the rest of the Delta scoreboard. Five hits allowed in the game now by Maddox. This is inside one ball one strike as a pinch hitter this year Alfonso is two for nine one and two the count. Two and two. This guy is 21 years old. He, I guess just turned 22, but is already Alfonso already drawing rave reviews for his maturity and his, his baseball knowledge. Yeah, very good instincts. Two two on the way. It almost hit him. Three and two. You saw Pete Walker in the bullpen. He'll come on to pitch in the bottom of the eighth. Still three and two. Nobody out. Thompson down at second. We're in the top half of the eighth inning with the Braves leading three nothing. In the air, shallow right again. Belliard and McGriff drifting back, and Fred McGriff caught it right over the head of Rafael Belliard. He almost ran Rafi right over there. One down. 
let's complete our Delta scoreboard for you in the American League. An eight run seventh inning for Baltimore. Mike Messina wins his 17th ball game. Toronto halfway through leading the Yankees shutting them out four to nothing. Minnesota over Kansas City. That's about halfway through too. That's now a one run ball game. And Chicago on a miserable night in Chicago. Two to one to score. 45 degrees and what do we hear? 15, 18 mile uh, an hour 15 wind? mile an hour wind blowing in from right field and the temperature 45. I wonder what it feels like. Feels like it's cold. <laughs> Here's Joe Horselak. I love asking you about heat index and wind chill factor. Never understood the need for either of those. If they tell you it's two degrees, but it feels like it's 10 below, two degrees is cold enough. If you're going to be cold at two, you don't need to know that it feels like it's colder. Here's the 1 0 pitch, little bouncing ball. Maddox, nice play off to the first base side of the mound, gets it over to first in time. Two men gone. Another good defensive play by Greg Maddox. Not only is he very athletic, but he's very lucky, too, that his basic mechanics puts him in a good position to feel. You notice him come off well balanced. He's very agile. Up the ladder, makes the play. That would have been a tough play for Belliard. Runs it over, gives McGriff a nice soft toss. Two away, runner at third, Jose Vizcaino, the batter. He's flying to left, grounded out to second and single. Play nothing in one. Foul wow, that one off, oh and two. Many times Greg Maddox will tell you after getting a left hand hitter to foul an inside pitch like that off. And he's able to pull the ball foul. He says if he's looking for it in there I'm going to give him something away and I'll get him. Then inside. Inside corner. Another strikeout for Greg Maddox his ninth. And we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Still three nothing Atlanta. Last pitch of the inning, Maddox with a two-seam fastball. You can see it. Watch this command. That's not control. It's command. Inside, watch the spin. Had to break about six inches. No wonder you guys give up on that. <laughs> that says it all. It does. New pitcher, right-hander Pete Walker takes over for New York, replacing Robert Person, who worked three scoreless innings, giving up a hit, striking out two. Walker making his 12th appearance of the year. And here's David Justice taking ball one. Justice tonight one for three at a single his first time up. Duno Walker out of the University of Connecticut. Seventh round draft pick back in 1990. On the ground short Viscaino up and throwing. One gone. Even though Greg Maddox on a normal night during the course of the season would probably stay in the game and try to get the complete game in the shutout with Mark Wallers not having worked the last couple of nights. He's up in the bullpen now. And Greg Maddox did get the handshake and the pat on the back from Bobby Cox when he got back to the Atlanta dugout. So it looks like it will be Wallers in the ninth inning. Dwight Smith takes a strike 0 and 1. He has just missed two home runs tonight. He had a ball caught up against the wall by Ryan Thompson in the fourth inning. And he hit one deep enough to just foul in the sixth. One and one. Two balls and a strike now on Dwight Smith. Right back to the pitcher. And Walker has retired the first two here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And now Charlie O'Brien. Who was thrown out twice on close plays at first, ground balls, then reached out an error.
in the air to shallow center field. Ryan Thompson loping in. And he puts it away. A 1 2 3 inning for Pete Walker. We have completed eight here in Atlanta. Braves on top, 3 0. We go to the top of the ninth. Braves leading at 3 0. Mike Devereaux has checked into the game in left field. He will bat ninth. And we have a new pitcher, Mark Wollers, who is eligible for a save here because the lead is three runs or less. It's a 3 0 lead. Greg Maddox, another masterpiece. Eight innings, five hits, no runs, no walks, nine strikeouts. I know you uh, you do a great job of keeping the pitches and all that. How many three ball counts did he have? Well, let's see. He was three and two on the leadoff hitter, Joe Orsalak, in the first inning. He was three and two on Ryan Thompson in the fifth inning. And that just about does it. He went to three balls on two hitters. He threw 95 pitches, 74 of them strikes. So you can't be three and two on too many when you <laughs> got that kind of ratio. Carl Everett had one of the five hits off of Maddox. A single back in the fourth inning. In fact, that was the first hit of the night for the Mets after Maddox had retired 11 straight. Oh, and one the count on Everett. 29,982, the paid crowd here tonight. The upcoming games this weekend, all three of them with Montreal, all three of them part of Fan Appreciation Weekend. All kinds of prizes will be given away on each of the last three home dates. One ball, one strike on Carl Everett. Wallers delivers the 1 1. Mile back, it's a ball and two strikes. You work all night long. Game moving along nicely. Top half of the ninth inning. Just about time to get things wrapped up and call it a night. Whop. And off right the top of your foot. Off the <laughs> top of the foot. One and two, the count. Nobody out here in the top of the ninth. <laughs> and the one two on the way breaking ball got him. Everett caught looking one gone ninth inning that'll bring up Jeff Kent. This may be the pitch and the knowing when to use it and the control of it. Breaking ball drops it right in there. There is no way if you're a hitter that you can set up there after trying to time a hundred mile an hour fastball and beyond an 85 mile an hour split finger. Matter of fact, I'd have been proud of an 85 mile an hour fastball. But when <laughs> that's 15 miles off that and it's breaking. Jeff Kett one for three had a single in the fourth inning. He's had a good series. He's had seven hits in 16 at bats. Now it'll be a seven for 17 performance over the four games as Rafael Belliard. There for the catch, two gone, ninth inning. And the last hope for the Mets is Rico Bronia. Two men out, bases empty, ninth inning, Braves leading at 3 nothing. Inside corner, 0 and 1. Rollers needing one more out for his 25th save of the year. Just missed inside. One ball, one strike. I just 
saw four scouts turn to each other with big eyes. That had to hit the century mark. One and one, two down, ninth inning. Filed away, and the count goes to one and two. Now, when Mark Wallers comes into a game, it looks like a rifle range. <laughs> and All they those tap guns it. come out. I've seen a lot of guys who will pick it up and tap it. You know, just to make just to make sure that they're reading it right. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Here comes the one two to Rico Bronia and it stayed outside two and two. Even after you've done it successfully for a while beat a lot of guys when you get two strikes want to finish it off so badly that they'll do just what Mark Wohlers did right there try to overthrow it get just a little out of sync. Here comes the two two pitch. High pop fly left field toward the corner in a foul territory. Mike Devereaux's got room. He's got it. And the Braves have beaten the New York Mets as Greg Maddox wins his 18th game of the year. Mark Wolers records his 25th save. And I'm sure it's no surprise to you that Greg Maddox is our AutoZone player of the game. His 18th win. Eight innings, no runs, no walks, nine strikeouts, but we're doing it for another reason, too. Take a look at this. A good night at the dish. Two for three with a couple of doubles. He scored the first run of the night. AutoZone, proud to, proud to honor him as our player of the game. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Braves win it three to nothing. Atlanta Braves Baseball, brought to you by Delta Airlines, the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games. And by Aflac, covering the unexpected cost of getting well. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. Bray split the series with the Mets, winning this one three to nothing. All the scoring in the bottom of the third inning. Greg Maddox, another exceptional night. Bray's three runs, a half a dozen hits, no errors. They stranded seven. The Mets, no runs, five hits, two errors. They stranded five. Maddox goes eight, wins it. He's 18 and two. You see the earned run average. That is absolutely phenomenal. A perfect ninth inning for Mark Wohlers, including one strikeout, his 25th save. Another reason we like Maddox out there. He wins. That's one, but it's always a brisk ball game. Hour and 57 minutes, right at 30,000 here tonight. Braves win it, three to nothing. Tomorrow night, the Montreal Expos come to town. That game on the Baseball Network. We're back with you on Saturday, 7:05 against the Expos. That'll be Steve Avery against Pedro Martinez. Coming up next on TBS, Gene Hackman stars in Class Action. Stay tuned for that. For Don Sutton, Skip Carey, Joe Simpson, our entire TBS crew. Pete Van we're in from the stadium in Atlanta. Once again, Greg Maddox pitched a masterpiece. Final score: Braves three. That's nothing. Good night, everyone.